These people became not the people that had God in their life and God's DNA as God's as, as God is their creation. No, they got corrupted. This is why these are demons. This is why God said, I feel sorry for I have created these people. I will because I will have to destroy them. And there was no reverse. There, there was no born again. It was done. The only person that can be reborn is the person that has no influence like that and is purely from God. So thank God that God has saved Noah. And from Noah, we are here today. Amen. The generation that God kept through one family that left, that has started with Adam and Eve. The pure, pure seed of what God has placed. Amen. So the Bible, it's a powerful book. It explains to us great things things, the mind of God, why God is doing what He's doing. We cannot ever put God into a judgment seat. Never. Because God is wisdom. He knows what He's doing. We have no idea of the things, but God has. Even today, I sense in my spirit and I know that after this election and before this election, it was a heavenly war. I'm not a politician, and I, would, I, 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 I don't think I'll ever be. But, spiritually speaking, we know, we can sense. Some people, they say, well, I don't feel anything, I don't see no signs, everything is okay. Okay, there is, a, well, there's a couple of uprisings there and there. But, when you are in the spirit, when God is showing you in the spirit, other people may, may, may still feel calm. But you know that there is a raging war above your head. Look at Elijah. Three and a half years passed. People looked in, in, looking into the heavens. So when is that rain? When is that rain? Elijah knew in the spirit. They were looking into the heaven that was blue. Sky. Not one cloud. But Elijah perceived by the Spirit, and he says, it's coming. Where? Where? And the church today, also, what's going on? Everything's clear, everything's blue. No, you cannot see heaven, this war, We're looking into heaven like that. It has to be given by the Spirit, amen? So Elijah, he said, well, go and check, because it's coming. Three times it took him to realize that the, the, the rain is really coming. There are people that they predict the economy ten years ahead. It's a profession like this. They go to university. Economists. And they predict ten years ahead. They're working for the government. Well, that's all they know. That's all they can do. And they predict by what? By numbers. They have formulas. By looking at what has passed, by looking at what it is, and look at, com com comparing these examples, they predict the future. Professions like that. But do you know what? God speaks to His church, to His prophets, and tells them exactly what's going on. Amen. Because God knows the future. People make mistakes. They look into the natural. We look into the supernatural. We look into the Spirit of God. God reveals this to His people. By His Spirit. Amen. This is why when we teach the Bible, when we bring the Bible, the truth of the Bible, we bring the truth of the Bible not because what we see or what we have learned. Or what man taught us. But what the Spirit of God is speaking and showing. 
That's how you understand the Word of God. Amen? So, in any case, let's talk about the things that are today. We understand that the flood came, and it happened exactly the way God said. Amen? And from Noah, a new generation went on. It doesn't mean it was all the way perfect. No. Because sin continued from Adam. Amen? But this was much greater than just sin. They were already mixed with giants, mixed with demons. The DNA was disturbed. And God says, that's it, it's not good. I created people. Not half demons, half people. Amen? And I'm telling you, it was by the grace of God, and on, only, and I believe only by the grace of God, that right after this, God kept humanity away from this, that it may not, it never happen again. Because Jesus had to come and redeem. See, the devil was, the devil is still fighting for, for people. For humanity to kill, to steal, to destroy. Amen? But since this has happened once, God says it's not going to happen again. And God said himself, I will never destroy the world by, 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 by flood again. It's, it, it will, it'll not, it's not going to happen. And if you remember, he has made a covenant with um, Noah. A new covenant with Noah. Different covenant. He had to create that covenant to continue. And God knew that we were sinful from Adam. And yet, through Noah he continued. Why? Because God was moving and leading toward the redemption plan. That God has preset before the foundation of the world. Amen. So there and there, the devil was trying to prevail, to bring things up, like perhaps Sodom and Gomorrah. And when these things happened, God did what? He just destroyed that city and that was over. Alright? He just destroyed that city and that was over. Now, I'm living in these days and last days today. And I, I want you to understand, we don't have to be afraid. Amen? God is going to keep His promises and God is going to keep you and I. And God is keeping this world for judgment. And again, until His judgment will strike, His love is still thriving and giving itself to the people through Jesus Christ. Amen? But, we know that God's judgment is going to come. I was quite often thinking about the book of Revelation and thinking this way. Why did God write this book? It's, it's, it's a very heavy book. There's a lot of trouble, isn't there? Amen? There's a lot of trouble, isn't there? Why God just, couldn't He avoid this thing? And just not to write and just uh, decide later what He wants to do? No. You know why? Because God is so righteous. Judge. So righteous judge. That, and He is so accountable to what He said. To what he's going to do, that he left everything in writing. This is how righteous and powerful my God is. He doesn't have to give account accountability to us. He doesn't have to uh, 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 tell us what he wants to do and what he would like to do, but he does, because he is a righteous judge. He's a loving father. 
He's a great God. And He has not just predicted, He laid down before the world all that has happened, happening and will happen without hiding anything. Without hiding a thing. Amen. And it means when we read the book of Revelation, if we understand that well, it means God is going to judge this world. There's no reverse. He is going to judge this world. And when God is going to judge this world, like I said at the beginning, His love, His mercy, and all His attributes, His emotions are not going to manifest. Just His judgment. His wisdom. Because He knows why He's doing that. If I'm going to tell you about the wisdom of God, you'll be shocked and you understand that God's wisdom. <laughs> Everything that God is doing by His wisdom is perfect. Because He knows why He's doing that. He's wise. Amen. That's why I'm going to tell you that God is dealing with every situation to its core. He never leaves things aside, hidden. He deals with to its core. Because the wisdom of God is incredible. He knows that He cannot leave a piece out of it. He knows that He has to finish the job. Because if he leaves something, that will bring calamity. And when God is doing something, he's doing perfectly. To understand what kind of wisdom God has. And why. It's amazing. It's amazing. By his wisdom, it says, he has created the universe. By his knowledge. By his wisdom. It means what he thought of this world need to be. It was his perfect plan. And it means he created everything perfectly. Powerfully. Because if he would neglect one little thing. And not to complete. This universe may collapse. Because he says. It says that he hanged the world on nothing. Can you imagine what kind of wisdom. You need to hang the world on nothing. That it's going to turn. For thousands of years and never get off its axle. That's wisdom. And imagine if God is not going to use his wisdom 100% what he thinks about, it means his plan cannot be fulfilled. Then it's a calamity. That's why by his wisdom he says, I'm going to destroy this world because it's over. And when God says it's over, it is over. That's why I believe, and I know in the Bible, God has the last word. Not me. My wisdom. It's not my wisdom. I have no comparison to the wisdom of God. It's by His wisdom that He decides my future. And He knows everything exactly up to its second. And if something will be shifted, if I would rule my life, I would ruin it. But God's by His wisdom is ruling my life and your life. Let Him do it. He'll finish it. He'll bring it to pass. Are you with me? Amen. Let Him be the righteous judgment. Let Him be the judge. Let Him be that wise wisdom for me. God is my wisdom. That's why Jesus became our righteousness. He is my wisdom from God. I trust in Him. He says, only I know the plans for you and the future. Only I know. You don't even know yourself. And He's a good God. He doesn't want anything evil. He wants everything that is good in your life. 
Glory to Jesus. Oh my God, I'm enjoying this. The word of God is all powerful. But yet we have some scholars that try to disprove God. Look into the Bible and even say, well, look, maybe some of the chapters are not supposed to be there. Added by men. Twisted. Listen to me. Do you think God with His infinite wisdom will allow this? Never. Because He wants us to know the truth. And if we would begin to believe that one of the books are crooked there, then how can God justify Himself? Then we have no proof. Amen. If God said this, if God left this in the Bible, that is perfect word because He drives things by His wisdom. If God has left us 66 books, if God has left us all these chapters over a thousand, it means it's from A to Z. And that's what Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I'm everything. I am everything from Genesis to Revelation. I may not understand, understand everything, and what I don't understand, I leave it alone, and I leave it in the hands of God because He knows. Are you following me? Because He knows. And I don't have to figure it out to disprove or approve Him. I don't have to approve God. He has already been approved. He doesn't look for my approval or my disapproval. He looks for me to be agree with Him because He wants good for me. Amen. I don't want to fall into deceptions and begin to argue with God and say, well, I don't know, this is something funny. I don't, I don't understand this kind of things, you know. Maybe it's not of God. Maybe it was added. Because it, don't, it doesn't sound right to me. Who are you to judge God's word? One person tried. Job. Did you know that? He really tried to prove himself that he is more righteous than God. <laughs> oh yes, he was at the end saying that, oh, look at me, how righteous I am. God is judging me unrighteously. And God said to Job, Job, I want to talk to you as man to man. So stand up. You try to accuse me that I am not righteous. And he began to ask Job. He says, if you know how these mountains came to existence, tell me. And he began to explain to him everything from a fly to a biggest animal. He says, do you know how they operate? And you trying to teach me? Accuse me that I was wrong and you were right? After what God told him, Job said, I'm going to put my mouth in a zip. I will never speak these things no more. I repent. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. I cannot trump over. I cannot step over God's wisdom. It's dangerous. If I will throw God's wisdom on the side and trust, try to justify my case, I'm in trouble. Because God's wisdom for me is the way of life. It's to say to the Lord that add, I don't believe that oxygen has to be contained from what it is. I think carbon, carbon, carbon monoxide should be involved in there, 50%. And if you will decide this and add into your oxygen carbon monoxide, in five minutes you're going to be dead. And God says, did you want to try it? He says, I have created an oxygen and you added something that killed you, but you thought it was right. 
same thing with our life. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot change God's truth. God's truth has been given for us so that we may live. You understand? God's truth was given so that we may have life and life abundant. Well, friends, we come into the end of this program, and uh, I just want to share something with you that has been in my heart for a while. While this message is uh, has been presented to you this week, and I think it's a powerful, powerful revelation, and uh, we have to understand that God is not only love, He's also a judge, and He is coming to judge this earth. He is coming to bring His truth. He is coming to bring His righteousness. Amen. And I believe with the, this uh, 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 last election just a few weeks ago in the United States, the changes are coming. I believe that the changes are coming. And I believe with this last election, as Donald Trump was elected as the president of the United States of America, I'm telling you, I believe God is giving us another chance and opportunity. Let us take this opportunity. We are not for... Uh, certain personalities we are not after certain personalities we are after God's righteousness and truth and I can see and we are the people that walk in by the Spirit we are the church God is is showing us in the spirit what it's all about I mean the news media is the news media they just walk in by what they see they, they walk in there by by numbers by predictions by uh, economy by um, politics you know but we are the church the believers in Christ God is showing us in the spirit what is going on and I believe as before the election has started we have entered into the heavenly war heavenly war and God has installed I believe God has installed that man Donald Trump into the United States of America as a president and I believe that with all my heart is because God has given us another chance. God has given us a little bit more time and opportunity to listen to Him, to repent, and to pay attention that we may open our ear and, you know, just listen to what God says because yeah, when God is going to come, He's not going to come with a bunch of love and uh, flowers for everybody. No, He's going to come to ju judge this earth. And when God is coming, He is coming with his power so I believe we still have time I believe God has given us another four years of opportunities and I believe and I know that we are going to have that opportunity so why don't just don't lose that time remember that Jesus is Lord there's no one else Jesus Christ is Lord you need to come to him today you need to repent you need to uh, forsake all your uh, ways uh, well, the worldly ways whatever it is forsake your sin and turn to Jesus so that your soul may be saved amen well as you see our phone number on your screen it's a toll-free number give us a call 1-877-279-4744 and I'll pray for you I'll believe God with you but remember this is not just a some kind of a formal religion this is the way the truth and the life Jesus says I'm the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but through me Jesus is the only one who died for you for your sins on the cross and was resurrected amen so God is the truth the Bible is the true Word of God open it read it accept it and be safe well thank you so much for watching this telecast thank you so much next week we're gonna continue we're gonna bring another subject and I pray that you will turn in and enjoy the Word of God with us also visit the website www.housetodayministry.org we have a lot of ministries there on youtube on facebook be connected and stay safe god bless you and until next time bye bye
See 